I want to thank you for being a part of Heart of a Shepherd Daily Devotional. It's always my joy to be able to come to you with a uh, study of God's Word daily. So we continue our working through the Word of God. Well, our scripture reading today is Psalm 132 and 2 Samuel chapter 6. Now, I've titled the devotional, A Right Motive, But a Wrong Method Invite God's Judgment. I do want to invite you to turn in your Bible. Our focus of this devotion will be taken from 2 Samuel chapter 6. Well, our chronological study of the scriptures does continue in the book of Psalms, Psalm 132, and we're also returning to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6. Now, in the latter, King David set his heart to bring the ark of God to Jerusalem, which served as the capital of Israel during his reign. Now, that event will be familiar for we consider the same event in our study of First Chronicles chapter 13. Now, regarding Psalm 132, I titled it A Song of Degrees, or that's the title in the scriptures. And uh, it is, of course, one of several by that title. And it was sung by pilgrims going up to Jerusalem and, of course, by the Levites when the priests ascended the steps to the temple. However, for today's devotion, let's take it from 2 Samuel chapter 6 as we consider the historical setting and narrative when the ark was transported to Jerusalem. And so 2 Samuel chapter 6, consider with me then the ark of God. Now the ark of God symbolized the Lord's heavenly throne and testified of his presence among his people. And therefore, David set his heart to bring the ark to Jerusalem, which was his capital. Now, we'll notice in verses 1 through 11 of 2 Samuel 6, the failed attempt to move the ark. Now, the ark had been neglected throughout the reign of King Saul. David, however, longed to return the ark to its prominence in Israel, and he prepared a new tent that would serve as its tabernacle. Now, the movement of the ark to Jerusalem was indeed a cause for celebration, and David gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000 strong, to attend its journey. The celebration, however, turned to tragedy when David set the ark of God upon a new cart and failed to employ, employ the staves or the poles God prescribed for its movement in Numbers chapter 4. And tragically, when the ark appeared ready to topple from the cart, Uzzah, or Uzzah, some might would say, placed his hand on the ark to steady it, and he was struck dead, for he had defiled that which the Lord had sanctified for himself. Now, Uzzah, I a faithful servant and a priest died because the king failed to search the scriptures and seek the mind of the Lord in transporting the ark. Now we read, David was displeased and he was angry with the Lord, chapter 6 and verse 8. His anger, however, soon turned to fear for the king complained, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? Well, the balance of the now familiar story continued with its temporary placement in the home of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. Now, the ark resided in his household for three months and was accompanied by the Lord blessing Obed-Edom's family. Now, we come to verses 12 through 19, which I would suggest is the joy and celebration when the ark arrived in Jerusalem. David then determined to renew his plan to retrieve the ark and celebrated and offered sacrifices to the Lord, this time as it was carried by the Levites. Now, all of Israel celebrated the arrival of the ark of God in Jerusalem with one exception. Michael, Saul's daughter, we read, looked through a window and she saw the king David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And we read in verse 16, she despised him in her heart. 
Why, after celebrating the appointment of the Ark of God to its place on Mount Zion, David blessed the people. He sent them home with, we read, a cake of bread, a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine, verse 19. But we look to the end of this story today with a, a sad moment in the household of King David. Here we see, beginning in verse 16, and then picking it up at verses 20 through 23, the tension between David and Michael, the king's wife. However, when David returned to bless his household after the celebration of having brought the ark to Jerusalem, he was scorned by Michael, his wife, and we read, who despised the king's delight in the Lord, verses 20 through 23. Well, how about a closing thought? In an earlier devotion, we observed the account of the ark's conveyance to Jerusalem. That was back in 1 Chronicles chapter 13. And there we consider some spiritual principles derived from the event. Well, we should consider the same spiritual lessons again, for they provide spiritual principles for our lives, our families, and ministries. Consider, first of all, this lesson. And it is that right motives never justify wrong methods. David failed to seek the Lord, and his plan for moving the ark came at the expense of a faithful servant's life. I'm convinced that there are many well-meaning people ministering in our churches today, especially in the music area, that have the right motive but I believe they're using the wrong method, or i.e. the wrong music. Now there's another spiritual truth, and that is that what God deems holy must never be treated as common. Now Uzzah, touching the ark, violated God's holiness. Now I'm going to close with a quote today, and it's from the late evangelist Dr. Bob Jones Sr. Now he said this in the pulpit many times in his challenge to the young people of his day. Quote, it is never right to do wrong in order to get a chance to do right. Let me say that again. It is never right to do wrong in order to get a chance to do right. There are a lot of people that defend the wrong things because they said, well, they meant well. Or they were innocent. They just, quote, made a mistake. Well, my friend, when it comes to spiritual things, we don't have the liberty to do the wrong thing because we feel we have the right motive. May God help us to be faithful to his word and obedient to it as well. God bless you, and bye-bye.